Hebrews 4:14 through 16 Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted, like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. God calls us to come to Him for grace and mercy in times of need. Most of us, myself included, were raised making wishes when we see the stars, or when blowing out candles on a birthday cake, or throwing a coin into some water. We think of these things as fun and harmless childish fantasies. But where did these things come from, and what do they mean? An article called The Evolution of Making Wishes Through Wishing Wells states, In ancient times, people widely believed that heavenly deities or holy spirits dwelled in the water sources and kept the water clean because water contamination was a much more common phenomenon in classical times. Thus our ancestors held the sentiment of acknowledging water as a saintly entity. This article specifically mentions the Celtic goddess Cavienta as being appeased by throwing money into fresh water wells and springs. In an article called Why Do We Wish on a Star? It says, There is evidence of cultures looking to the stars for answers, dating back millennia. According to Nicholas Campion, a professor in cosmology and culture at the University of Wales, the ancient Egyptians believed that your soul ascended to the stars when you died, and that when your soul reached the stars, you gained absolute wisdom, according to Campion. It also points out that Ptolemy believed that stars were gods, or at least signs from the gods. An article called The Curious Origin of Blowing Out Birthday Candles says, Another version takes us to the mysterious land of ancient Greece. At that time, round sweets with candles on them were offered to the moon goddess. Artemis. These messages represented the full lunar cycle, and the candle fire was extinguished in one breath, so that the smoke that came could reach the deity, carrying with it the wishes of mortals. Links to these articles will be included in the video description. My point is is that all these things have their roots in idolatry and paganism. God declares in Isaiah 42, 8, I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. It is a sin to give the glory that rightly belongs to God alone to false gods through traditions of men. Most of us, myself included, have done it in ignorance. But now that we know, we are responsible for what we do with this knowledge. Think about it a moment. Even if we ignore, forget, or fail to recognize that these things come out of false religions, are these things really so harmless? Don't they undermine our faith in God and our ability to trust in Him alone to provide for us? Not that we are just supposed to ask Him, then do nothing, as if we don't have a part to do to get those things we want or need. We do need to understand that God is not obligated to reward laziness, but He blesses those who are willing to do their part. But we still need to trust Him with His part. He has a part to do, and so do we. We should not undermine his part by making a wish through a false religious tradition. As Christians, we don't need to send our wishes up in the smoke of candles to a moon goddess, 
or wish on a star that has no power to hear, let alone grant wishes made to it, nor to throw away money into water to get a wish granted by some false god that has no power to produce happiness. We have a relationship with the very God who created fire and stars as well as the water. The Bible tells us that we can come to God himself to make our requests. So why should we make wishes on anything else when we have God who created all things and has all power to provide what we need? So let's stop making our wishes through false religions and bring our requests to God alone instead. It may be that the very first request you need to make is for Him to be in your life. Did you know that He loves you and wants to be with you in your life? If you want Him in your life, then you can start with repenting of your sins, turning away from them and turning to Jesus for forgiveness and salvation. You can do that right now with a simple little prayer like this. Dear Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins and that you rose again the third day. I repent of my sins, so please forgive me for my sins and come into my heart and be Lord of my life. Help me overcome sin in my life and live for you so I will have joy when I see your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Get a Bible and start reading it to learn more of His will so you can live out His holiness in your life. If you have ever wished you could read the story of Jesus' life from all four Gospels chronologically, you might like Emmanuel by April Marie. You can check it out at any of these websites, also included in the video description. Thank you for watching. May you experience God's power to supply for all your needs.